Hey there, I'm excited to announce this to you today. This is what you've been waiting for in your spiritual quest. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm finally ready to announce it that it's ready to go. It's the Grief to Growth Community Circle. Now, this is a sanctuary where like-minded souls are united in their journey through grief and towards personal transformation. It's more than just a place. It's a beginning. It's a commitment to growth and understanding. Here you're finding not just a community, but you're entering a circle of trust and depth. You're going to engage with interactive coursework. You'll dive into exclusive podcast episodes and partake in discussions that illuminate the path from mourning to empowerment. This is a realm where every question is honored and every individual's journey is validated. To be part of this exclusive circle, visit us at grieftogrowth.com slash community or look for the chat icon at the bottom of every page on the main website. Remember that entry is a privilege because I want to ensure that every member is as dedicated and genuine as you are. You must apply to join, but the journey within is worth every step. So go ahead and join us today. Check it out, grieftogrowth.com slash community, and I look forward to seeing you there. Hi there. Welcome to Grief to Growth Podcast. Your host is Brian Smith, spiritual seeker, best-selling author, grief survivor, and life coach. Brian believes that the worst tragedies of life provide the greatest opportunity for growth. Brian says he was planted, not buried, and he is here to help you grow where you've been planted by the difficulties in life. In each episode, Brian and his guests will share what has helped them to survive and thrive. It is his sincere hope this episode helps you today. Hey, everybody, this is Brian Smith back with another episode of Grief to Growth. And today I've got with me my friend, uh, Daniel John. And Daniel's been on, I think, a couple of times we, we've we had conversations on, on uh, Grief to Growth. But Daniel is a certified spiritual medium. He's a Reiki master, and he is the author of the new book, Why Are We Here? Reflections on Life from a Spiritual Medium. So, uh, Daniel, with that, welcome to Grief to Growth. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me. Daniel, it's, I, I've known you, I guess, for maybe a little over a year now. We met through uh, a group on Facebook that you were doing some work with, uh, Voice mm-hmm. of Our Angels, uh, or Voice of Our Angel. And um, you know, it's really been really interesting getting to know you and watch you as you've developed as, as, a, as a medium and as a person and with your faith and with your book. And so your book discusses all that. It discusses like how you came out as a medium and how your faith has evolved and, and those types of things. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and start with that. So how did you discover that you were a medium or how did you become a medium? So I think, I think, you know, those are gifts that are given from the Holy spirit. So I think it's always been there. I don't think it was time to really come to fruition until a few years ago. And the short version, I was, I was sitting next to a woman at a restaurant and, uh, I started getting these like feelings, visions, pictures, just things started coming to me names. And it ended up being somehow, some way, even though this was against my religion or, you know, even against what I even believed to be possible, Mm -hmm. her husband who had passed away six months before, you know, he had passed away right in front of her. And she was having a hard time. And I didn't really know any of this. I knew he had passed because she, she was a, we were coworkers at work and she announced when she was introduced to our team that her husband had passed, but that's all I knew. So I sat next to her at a restaurant and a work event and he came through and, um, she, after, so it's 45 minutes of just like his name and things. And I thought, you know, did, did I read her mind or did like, where did this stuff come from? And I was like nervous about all that, but I know that after the reading, um, <clears throat> she was so, grateful and so full of love and was so happy to connect with him somehow, some way, I realized at that point I needed to figure out what that was about. And if I can help people, which is something I always love doing, um, then I wanted to figure out what that was about so I can continue to help more. Yeah. So you're just, you're, you're having this conversation with the, her and spontaneously things started coming to you that sh- she was apparently validating. Yep. And that was my first official quote unquote reading. And I talk about that story in the book of how mm-hmm. it all happened. And that was the first time it ever happened. And and I explain also towards the latter part of the book about, you know, the process, because it's not how, you know, you and I are having a conversation right now. It's, it's very, very subtle and you have to pick up on those things. But the main goal is to help others because some people, when they experience grief, um, they handle it different ways. And some people lose their faith in God. And my job, and I've been told this through spirit is to help people rekindle their faith with them. Yeah. So, so you, you, you don't believe that mediumship is possible. You actually believe it's against your faith, (laughs) but now you find yourself giving a reading. So how did, how did, how did that hit you emotionally after this happened? 
I mean, I was confused. I didn't know what happened. Um, you know, and even back then I didn't even know there were that, I mean, I just remember being told, you know, and, and I was raised Catholic and saved in ninth grade. And I just remember hearing that I really didn't. And I read scripture, but I was more of a new Testament. I read more of the new Testament. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I, when I finally came out and this is getting a little ahead, I, I looked at some old Testament scripture and found out that, wow, this really, you know, this is really quote unquote against the Bible. So then I went on this journey of just praying and trusting and reading books and asking God and you just and finally coming to the point and realizing that this is a spiritual gift that I'm, that I'm so, like supposed to do, supposed to use to help others. So it's yeah. very hard and confusing, actually. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting journey. And you and I were talking before we got started. Yeah, I think you and I have taken similar journeys where we have this kind of fundamentalist faith, for lack of a better word, that mm-hmm. says this is right and this is wrong. And then something comes along in our life and, and it, it challenges that. Uh, in, in my case, I had a relative who turned out to be gay. And when he passed away, I was told he was in hell. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me that this person who was one of the best people I've ever known in my life uh, is gay and the church wouldn't accept him because of that. Therefore, God is going to punish him eternally. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. So I went on the same journey as you. I'm like, I got to find out how do I read the Bible properly? What, where did it come from? You know, all those things. And then we find out, you know, there's been a lot of misinterpretation. I feel that same way, for sure. Yeah. So um, so you, you, you have this gift uh, you know, as a medium, but you're still not really sure mediumship is a real thing. So your next step, I guess you actually went to see a medium, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, so it was a few months of, and, and in the book, I also talk about some things of the world I had to kind of give up you know, to realize and embrace this gift. But Mm -hmm. yeah, being a skeptic, I had to go see a medium for myself. Absolutely. And it was like, you know, there's certain things that you can like, you know, I was thinking maybe she's Googling it or maybe she did this, but you know, I talk about it in the book, but I tested her. I limited my responses. I watched her, you know, mannerisms, you Mm -hmm. know, I listened to what she said without giving her too much information. And without a doubt, I walked out of that reading with like, okay, this is real. Oh, by the way, she mentioned that this was something that I was supposed to do. And Mm -hmm. that's that I had a feeling about that. There was a part of me that thought that if I could do that, I should be doing it. And she hinted at it without me even saying anything about it. Yeah. And I think it's really, you know, the thing about you, like I said, I've known you for a while now, you're all about helping people. So you're not a person that got into mediumship to make money or become famous. In fact, you still have a full-time job. This is what you, you know, you do to help people. Um, and I know for a long time, I don't think you even charge for your readings. Is that right? I did. I did them free for a while. And then I, I kind of leaned on some other mediums and I talk about this in the book as well about why mm-hmm. I do charge. Mm-hmm. I keep my costs very, very reasonable, but you know, like I have a studio and so there's, um, a cost to that. So yeah, free at first, just to make sure that I was doing it. But, but, you know, that being said, I volunteer, as you know, for, you know, voices of our angels, yeah. helping heal. I've given 20 or 30 and I talk about this in the book as well. Readings to just, you know, people who reach out to me that the Holy spirit guides me to give them a free reading where I don't need to collect money, but I explain it as a balanced thing. And I do keep my costs very reasonable, but I'm big on tithing, you know, tithing, as you know, is in the two biggest religions in the world. And I don't think that's a mistake. Um, so I love giving back and I, I really just love helping people. That's the, I love it. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. I actually run a, a Facebook group where I try to bring parents and mediums together and one of the questions that keeps coming up is people are like, I just think it's unfair that people charge for, for gifts. You know, if it's given to you as a gift, you should give it away. But as you, you just touched on a couple of things there. I mean, one thing is it's an exchange. The other thing is you have expenses as a medium. You've got overhead. You, you have a studio. I, I know a lot of mediums do a lot of training. Um, almost every medium I know does a lot of giving back, you know, free things. And our time is worth something, you know, all the time that we're doing, that you're doing, doing readings, you're you're not spending doing something else. You're taking away from your family or something else. So it's it's interesting to me that every other gift that people have, the gift of being a surgeon, you know, we'll Mm -hmm. gladly pay a surgeon. We'll gladly pay someone, a plumber to come to our house and fix our pipes or an electrician, someone that performs a service. But there's something about mediumship that, and it's it, also people even pay their pastor, right? And we, we, we don't expect pastors to do work for free. So yeah. I, uh, I, I, I do want to get that out there, you know, to support you and your profession that it's, it's fine to charge you. you. You have to charge, you have to, you have to make a living. 
Yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of points, but I think the main thing is, is one, it's a balanced thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's, and I've even traded with other practitioners where if it's a Reiki, you know, whether it's Reiki or acupuncture where I'd give a reading and do exchange of, of something like that. But yeah, the mm-hmm. balanced thing is it's a deeper uh, explanation through all of my readings. I've, ex- I've understood that there is a balance that needs to happen. And sometimes money as an exchange is, is it. And the other point that you made is very valid. Like when I'm doing readings, if I have some days, you know, on weekends, I'll have like three readings in a row and I'm not with my kids. So, and, and I, and I charge very reasonable. I, I, I'm, I try to keep it like to where it's not expensive. And we also have to pay, I pay all my taxes. So when you yeah. boil it down, I really don't make a lot of money at all. When you have the electric bill, the studio, the rent, you know, I have to use those money for, from readings to, to pay for that stuff. So it really is a balance and it helps out. Um, but at the same time, I do think it's important to not to play the other side of the fence is where I do give a lot of free readings. I give them away. I donate them. I try to donate my time so that I am big on tithing, like I said, and mm-hmm. I try to balance that and lean on the Holy Spirit to guide me and when I should charge and when I shouldn't. And on a human level, I don't like charging money. I really don't like collecting it, but it does. It pays the bills and supports the family for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So your book, um, I, I just finished it. I, I got it this week. It's, it's a great book. It's really interesting. I guess it's kind of a, a, a combination of a memoir and also kind of a, a guide for life. You give a lot, of, you get some advice in there, like about how to raise your vibration. You talk about, you know, diet, which is something I haven't seen in a, in a spiritual book before. So mm-hmm. let's, let's kind of go through some of the things in the book uh, in terms of some of the advice you give. Let's, let's start with diet. I thought that was an interesting chapter. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, there's something I want to tell you about today. My podcast platform, Buzzsprout, has recently made it easier for me to allow you to support me financially. Go to www.grieftogrowth.com slash subscribe. That's grief, the number two growth.com slash subscribe. And once you're there, you can sign up to support me financially. Now you can do it for as little as $3 a month or of course, as much as you'd like. If you do that, you'll get access to bonus episodes and you'll see those in the regular feed. They'll have a lock on them. But when you become a subscriber, you'll actually get access to your own private feed and you'll be able to listen to the regular podcast along with the bonus podcast for the subscribers. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for sharing the podcast. I want to thank those of you who support me financially. Have a great day and on to the episode. So it's funny. My I, I had two editors for my book, and the first editor was like, "Why are you including a chapter on diet in, in a spiritual book?" And uh, number one, I'm actually a former personal trainer mm-hmm. and uh, focused on nutrition. So, uh, and I feel like uh, that's something that a lot of people need a little help with. So it's a very basic chapter. It's chapter 17, um, and it just includes things that we should and shouldn't eat. And the main reason is in another chapter in the book is that we are energy and all the things that we do to our body, including diet have an effect on us. So when we, when I talk about in the book, processed foods and, you know, certain foods like alcohol and sugars and things like that, it changes our energetic vibration. So diet is just one piece of the puzzle. I thought it was very important to include, include in the book. Yeah. Like I, I think that's, you know, the thing is we are, we're spirit, but we're also human. We're also body. And they, the, our spirit interacts with our body, I think, to an extent. And as you said, you know, if our body's not feeling well, then it's going to, it's going to bring our, our vibration down, for, for lack of a better word. So I thought that that chapter was really uh, important, even though you took away all my favorite stuff. <laughs> I, know. I mentioned that, too. It's like, all right, I just nixed all the good stuff. I know. Yeah. But moderation. we can... But yeah, I was gonna say, but I do like you gave me permission to have moderation because I was, at first I was like, okay, I can't, I can't have a beer anymore. But you said, <laughs> yeah, you can have it in moderation. So yeah. I appreciate that. Um, so also in the book, you talk about um, your faith, and I know your faith is very, very important to you. And, you, and we can tell already, just you know, the, the conversation starting out here. So uh, how would you describe your faith journey? Where are you now? And you, you mentioned you started off Catholic. Uh, you were saved. Uh, you said, I think you said eighth or ninth grade. Um, mm-hmm. So talk to me about your progression in your area, not your progression, but your journey. Uh, through the whole life, K through six Catholic, you know, pretty strict Catholic saved in ninth grade. I was with the organization called Youth for Christ. And mm-hmm. uh, at that point, I, I started following the teachings of Jesus and I have not stopped that. 
Um, I've kind of changed what I call my religion. I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus and his teachings and a Christ follower, but I've also looked into the teachings of Buddha and Muhammad and some other religions because I feel like it's good to be open-minded and expand. Um, <clears throat> now I call my religion love. Um, I follow the teachings of Jesus. So could you call me a Christian? <clears throat> yes, because I follow the teachings of Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, but as we talked about earlier, I'm, I'm far from a fundamentalist because I lean on my relationship with Jesus through my heart. Um, I use scripture as a book to spread love. I don't Mm -hmm. use it to judge or to damn or condemn, or, um, I feel like Jesus speaks just as much as he does, you know, back then he he speaks now just as much as he did back then. And so I read the Bible daily. I, I use scripture to spread love. Mm-hmm. And uh, my religion is love, but I, I really follow the teachings uh, mostly of Jesus. So um, you can call myself, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I relate to Christianity, but I also have a lot of, you know, and, and just really quick, I'll share it. Yeah. I, don't believe, I don't believe in an eternal hell. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe Jesus is the only way, you know, John 14, 6 says, I am the way, I'm the light, the only way to the Lord. And a lot of fundamentalists uh, think that he is. Um, I've grown to accept that his teachings and my, my interpretation of the Bible is that mm-hmm. 14, 6, John is, is that you, um, his teachings are the way. Um, I also believe, uh, like you mentioned about your friend earlier, that I believe God made a homosexual person that way in this lifetime for a specific reason. I don't think that, you know, on Corinthians six, nine, for instance, where it says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. I did a little research on that. So long story short, I use the Bible to spread love. I follow teachings of Jesus. And what he taught me is to love, have compassion for others, forgive, and to just look at the positives all the time and do the best you can in this life to help other people be the best people they can. So, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm like right there with you. And I, I struggled for a long time with, uh, do I still call myself a Christian or not? Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I choose not to at this point, just because it, there's so much explaining I have to do if I say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Well, mm-hmm. I'm a Christian that doesn't believe in eternal hell. I'm a Christian that doesn't believe that Jesus had to die to save me from an angry God. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a Christian that doesn't believe that, you know, like, I think you kind of went through the math like I did, too. There's like 7 billion people on the planet, and like 2 billion of us are Christians, maybe. And so that means two thirds of the people in the world are, are going to go to hell. And mm-hmm. by the way, there's like 30,000 Christian denominations. And most of them say the other ones are going to go to hell because when I was growing up, Catholics were going to hell because mm-hmm. Catholics didn't didn't uh, speak in tongues. And if you didn't speak in tongues, you were going to hell. So all of that stuff just just I, I'm like, OK, I can't. I'm a big follower of Jesus. I think Jesus is a special uh, master, as some people would say, a special being. I follow his teachings. I think he is a great example. And I think, like you said, when I started doing my exegesis on the Bible and I saw that verse, I, I've heard people say the same thing. When Jesus said, I am the way to the Father, it's like, not he didn't mean I. Jesus spoke of his teachings. So he mm-hmm. was he was saying, I'm, my example, when, the life that I'm living, the things that I'm telling you, it's and it's all about love, like you said. Yep. And it's Christ consciousness, right? So Jesus, his name, it was Yeshua, mm-hmm. right? And, and we call him Jesus the Christ because the Christ is the consciousness. And then when we talk about, which we'll probably talk about next, about mediumship in the Bible, um, you know, well, we'll get to that because I know you want to get to that. But yeah, I follow his teachings, but I've also looked into uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, um, mm-hmm. even Judaism, which is, you know, very similar with Christianity, but or some of the old versions, but also, um, you know, Islam. And some yeah. of the teachings of Muhammad. And it's really interesting. There's a lot of similarities I talk about in the book. There's tithing and praying and, you know, fasting and visiting your home, you know, you know, the church, quote unquote. There's a lot of similarities. Yeah. People are open minded enough to understand that um, there's more than just one religion. Um, and also, too, last thing, you know. Jesus is available through the scripture, but I think he's, and I mentioned this before, I think he's available now. I felt like I've had conversations with the Holy Spirit, with Christ consciousness mm-hmm. more so now than by just want, just reading a book. And I think, I think things change. And I think the Bible is a book to be used to spread love and that Christ consciousness is available to us all right now today. It's not stuck in a book 2000 years ago. Yeah. I, and I completely agree. You know, it was, it was interesting because I was going through my transformation. I was going to different churches and it ended up at the United Church of Christ. And one of the things was God is still speaking. It was something that they said. And another saying they had was never place a, a period where God has placed a comma. So I started thinking, okay, well, why did God stop speaking 2,000 years ago? You know, he, he, apparently he spoke to Paul and that was it. Then God just you know pulled away and said, you know, you guys are on your own. 
So okay. when I talk to my fundamentalist friends and they say, I was talking to one of them about like near death experiences. And I said, you know, I talk to people all the time. I have near death experiences, et cetera. And he's like, but I really don't believe in those. I said, well, I think Paul had at least a couple near death experiences. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, what do you mean? So I told him about the road to Damascus, right? He sees a bright light. He hears a voice. He falls to his knees. He's struck blind. You know, all these things. I'm like, that sounds a lot like the people I talked to who've had near death experiences. And uh, he goes, yeah, but it was Paul. I'm like, but why do you believe Paul that wrote this 2000 years ago, but you don't believe John that I spoke to yesterday that yes. had a similar experience and, what and they comes say back. Then? Yeah. Well, then it's like, well, yeah, but, but, but Brian, you know, I, I come down to, it's all about the, it's about the Bible. It's all about right. the Bible, which is just such a, I hate to say it, it's a brainwashed perspective mm -hmm. because why should we think, I mean, this, this was written by men at some point. And as they say, inspired by the Holy spirit. Okay, fine. Why did the Holy Spirit stop speaking? And I, I got to tell you, when I, when I read Neil Donald Walsh's Conversations with God, the first time I read it, I felt like I was reading blasphemy. You know, this guy's like, you know, God said, God downloaded all stuff to me. I, but I read it, and I'm like, but there's so much truth in what he's saying. And then I thought, well, why couldn't it be true? You know, but we've all been, as Christians, we were taught, this is it. God stopped speaking then. Don't listen to anybody else. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi there, I'm really excited to tell you about my latest ebook. It's four lessons that you can learn from the near-death experience without going through all the trouble of dying to learn them. I've been studying NDEs for several years now. I am completely convinced that not only are they 100% real, but that there's some very universal wisdom that we can get from the near-death experience. And I've distilled that down in this book into four short lessons. And I've also given you all the reasons why I believe the NDEs are absolutely real. So go to www.grieftogrowth.com slash NDE lessons to pick it up for free www.grief the number two growth.com slash nde lessons i hope you enjoy it yeah it's crazy there's actually chris i've read a couple near-death experience books that were written by christian writers there's a couple of them i've read and they're very good and mm -hmm. they speak about you know one of them uh, i can't think of uh, james garlow wrote one of them he has an interesting perspective on com spirit communication but yeah there's actually Christian writers who write about NDEs and how important they are and how similar they are and how pretty much the heaven exists is their, yeah. is their point. So, Well, Howard Storm was a, a total atheist when he had his near death experience. And he, he's now he's a Christian pastor and he, mm -hmm. he came back and he, he, be, he became a Christian after his near death experience and, and talks about Jesus and the Bible and all that stuff. He's a UCC pastor. I think he's retired now. Mm -hmm. um, Mary Neal was a Catholic when she had her near death experience still, I consider herself Catholic as far as I know. So I read, sorry to interrupt you. I read her book. Is she the one that got in the boating accident? And yeah. Her yeah. That was a good one. I like yeah. that. Yeah. That was a really, really interesting experience. As for me being a person who's had a child transition, you know, and she talks about, she knew that, that her son was going to pass and mm -hmm. her, that her whole journey with that, that just, you know, that really fascinated me, but it's really, it's, um, it's interesting why some Christians think that near-death experiences are of the devil, you know, because the Bible doesn't say anything about that. But for some reason, they've made it up that, you know, I guess they say the dead know nothing, you know, stuff like that, which is, again, uh, as we call it, the Old Testament or Hebrew scripture kind of passage based on a, an understanding that they had at the time. But I don't want to steal your thunder, but you talk about why you think mediumship is okay, and it's on a, on a biblical basis. So go ahead and uh, tell me what you think about that. Yeah, it, I mean, it's chapter six is the biggest chapter in the book. Um, it's actually part of the reason I think Spirit guided me to write the book, because there, mm -hmm. there are a certain amount of people that are open-minded enough to say, okay, I was taught this, uh, I always believed this, but there's this, you know, and there's not just me, there's other authors, there's other, you know, mediums. They're saying these things, and I don't know. Part of me feels like it's true, so that's why I, I you know, I, 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 I wrote, a, I made a YouTube video about mediumship and Christianity. Mm -hmm. But the, it's a long story. It's a twenty-minute video, and it's very compact. But a long story short is, um, when I first started doing this, uh, you know, if I would have listened to what I thought was the truth, or what I was told was the truth before, or even what a book told me was the truth, <clears throat> I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today. And where that is, and this is kind of this, and I'll go backwards, is I get, 
I've done over a thousand readings and the emails, the phone calls, the messages of healing and faith in God. And, you know, you know, you've lost, you've had a, a, a daughter transition and, mm -hmm. and I think you've actually, maybe she's come through, I think for a couple of the readings we've done and it's so peaceful and healing and loving. Um, so when I gave the reading to the woman in Boston and I realized she was so happy and thankful. And then I realized after coming out, when someone wrote me an email, there's all these old Testament scripture and you are channeling the, the devil and you're going to hell and all these things like that. I took a step back and was like, all right, well, maybe I need to quit. Maybe all these like healings and loving and faith in God and all this stuff is just like a hoax. And maybe it really is the devil fooling me. So yeah. that's when I like literally bought the 40 hour version of the Bible. I read it. I, I absorbed it. I prayed and had God lead me to book after book. And during this time, just as I am now, I drive a lot for work. So I would listen to a book or two a week and absorb. And I absorb more listening than I do reading. Thank God for Audible. And I let, literally read a hundred plus books in the first year and a half about mediumship, the Bible, and everything in between, all kinds of spirit, spiritual things and ask mm -hmm. God to lead me to those books. So long story short, you can look at Old Testament scripture, and this is a real long story short, and you can look at some of the things that are written there and think that they apply a hundred percent black and white today. Um, but I strongly feel that they don't. Uh, and in the book I talk about, and one of the, one of the, and there's lots of verses, but I, I do Deuteronomy 22, 22, where, mm -hmm. you know, it, it says that if a man and woman, um, are found being unfaithful, they both shall die. Mm -hmm. Right. But in John eight, three, when uh, Jesus is brought uh, a woman from the Pharisees, what are you to do with her? She was caught being unfaithful. Jesus doesn't condemn her. He doesn't even, he doesn't kill her. Um, he just asks her to stop sinning. So mm -hmm. my basis of everything that I do and everything that anyone should do is based in love. Are you mm -hmm. doing it because of love or are you doing it because of fear? And it, it's one or the other. And you know what? People have certain gifts. Uh, we all have gifts and some of them abuse them. Some of them use them for not good things. It's like any other profession. There's people that, you know, like you mentioned, doctors, male practice, you know, mediums. Yeah. yeah there's some people that are charlatans and do this just to make money and things like that. That's, That's why I believe in John four, one, it says, test the spirits. Why are we supposed to test the spirits if we're not supposed to communicate with them? You know, Jesus was a medium. If, it, if you look in Matthew 17, he channels Moses. Moses has been dead for a long time. Matthew 17 I got goosebumps, is one of the <laughs> biggest Bibles or one of the biggest chapters in the verse. That's when God announces that Jesus 17, five, this is my son. This is who I, you know, has come here. It's full of love. And you, know, you mentioned everything like that, but so you can look at old Testament scripture and see that it says in Leviticus and Deuteronomy and Kings and Chronicles that you're not supposed to consult mediums. I answer to those, those exist for a reason. Number one, we should not be communicating, connecting with spirit. If you're not protected in God's light and you're educated and you're doing it for love. If you're not, I highly recommend that you don't. You can, mm -hmm. God blessed us with free will as free will as souls and as human beings. It works the same way. There are souls that are in the earth plane that have chosen not to return to the light to heaven uh, because of the free will. You do not want to connect with them. I have to say prayers before every reading. I have to say prayers after every reading. I have to shine a white light on me. I have to ask for his permission. These gifts are from the Holy Spirit. So if mm -hmm. I listen to Old Testament scripture, um, maybe there are people that shouldn't do mediumship and should listen to Old Testament scripture. It's why they exist. It's not so black and white. That's what mm -hmm. I would say to you as a short. It's not so black and white. There are people that have been given gifts, and it says in Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11, gifts of spiritual discernment, speaking in tongues, prophecy, their gifts. It's written by Paul in the Corinthians to say that we all have these gifts to help other people. It's written in Peter, in first Peter, um, chapter four, eight through 11, it talks about using your gifts, your spiritual gifts to help others. Mm -hmm. So if I listen to the old dogma, right. Or what I was taught before about, um, mediums, then I wouldn't be experiencing the love, the healing and, everything that goes along with mediumship. And like for you, for, I do a lot of readings for parents who've lost children. And if they committed suicide, or I'm sorry, if I'm trying to work on my wording, if they were responsible for their own passing, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's fundamentalist, not to speak for all of them, but a lot of them from conversations would think that they're in eternal hell. Yes. Well, so now as a parent, am I going to be saved and spend my life in eternal bliss while my child is in an eternal damnation? Or, you know, is maybe that not true? And so when I channel these souls that have fallen on their own hand or committed their own act or taken, I can't give the right wording, mm -hmm. and they're on the other side in the spiritual realm. And I know, not know, because I don't claim to know anything, but I believe mm -hmm. by all of my experiences and the hundreds of souls I've connected to that have taken their own life, um, they're okay. 
They, yeah. they tell me things that would just blow your mind. So you can either be stuck in Old Testament scripture and saying, nope, I don't want to do anything with that. Or you could say that, hey, maybe what I've read, what I've always believed and what I've been taught may not be true because there's people, to your point, right here, right now that are telling me different things. And there's this little part of me. This is who I want to reach. Those little part of people that say, you know, maybe there is some truth to this. Maybe yeah. my child is okay. Maybe they're not in a term. My uncle who was Jewish or my other person who didn't believe in Jesus or this other religion, you know, that wasn't believing in Jesus. They're not in eternal hell that they are okay. And right. so that's why I do what I do. And you and I'm, to answer your question, long story short, we can either look at scripture as black and white, the only truth of God, or we can say, hey, maybe God still speaks today. The Holy Spirit still, still speaks today. Jesus actually still speaks today. And there are other things that may be a reality or a possibility that may be different than my, my thoughts and beliefs in Old Testament scripture. Yeah, I think you made a lot of excellent points there. And some, some of the things that I went through, you know, and one of the things that I went through when I was going through my my transition, I guess, is that when I was reading the, I hate to use the word Old Testament because it's, it's actually in the front to people who are Jewish. So it's, I call it Hebrew scriptures. But when we talk, when we talk about the Hebrew scriptures, those are written for the Jews, first of all, and we're Gentiles. So it's like, we were never under the law. We read those as, as if they applied to us. The other thing is in the same book that says where, you know, you shouldn't consult with mediums or you shouldn't be homosexual. It also says you shouldn't eat shellfish. And it uses the exact same word that it's a quote abomination. And it was, these were, these were dietary things. These were restrictions that were put on the Jews to make them separate. So uh, there's, there's so much that we could talk about there, but this is why we really have to dig in and understand like even the concept of being a homosexual, there was no concept of homosexuality back then. So it would, they didn't understand that there were, there were some people who just had that orientation. Mm -hmm. So when Paul talks about, and when Paul talks about a man lying with the, um, another man, he's actually talking about um, uh, pedophilia, where men were like grown men were with boys. So it was a, it was a different thing. So that's my whole point. We got to we got to really dig in and understand. And it all comes down to love. That's all. What it, it, I mean, yeah. it's, the only, it's the only English word to explain it is love. Are you doing something based in love or fear? For instance, marriage. You know, you can look at certain scriptures. It says man and woman forever, whatever. Or, you know, from my experience, I've had souls tell me that they were supposed to be with this person for a chunk of time. And then there was supposed to be with another person for a chunk of time. And that would, if you looked at it, to scripture, that's like wrong. But in reality, is it love? If two people can mutually agree that they're going to separate and then they end up being happily married. I have friends that are friends with the new husbands and wives and everyone's happy and full of love, but it's against scripture. So like, is that wrong in God's eyes? I, I highly doubt that. And that's just yeah. one small example. Is it love or is it fear? And that's what it, it, and I talk about that in the book. It's one of or either other. And which one are you choosing? Yeah. And when people talk about mediumship as being from the devil, I'm like, okay, well, the devil's doing a lousy job then because he's bringing people all kinds of peace and love and understanding and an expanded view of themselves and a better view of mankind. And I've seen people healed through medium readings. I've seen people healed through reading near death experiences and just, just lighting up and saying, wow, this is really true. And it, and it confirms what the Bible tells us, right? It tells us we're eternal beings that we, you know, that we, that we live forever, that we're not, we're not just our bodies. I mean, all these things are, are brought out from the work that you do. So um, it's just, to me, it's a matter of, it's like you said, the Bible says, test the spirit by the spirit. What's this, what's this producing? What's the fruit of, of your, of your work? Right. Then you could have someone who's given this gift who chooses to use love and help others. And you can have someone who with free will has a gift and chooses to charge too much you know, make up stuff, you, you name it. Mm -hmm. It's choosing love over fear. And, and I will talk about, have you ever, have you ever heard of Rob Bell? Um, but I've just, oh, yeah. read his, I just read his book and I really enjoyed it. Um, and he talks about, you know, it's almost like a logical uh, explanation. And he talks about, does God get what he wants? Cause you, so you, I'd ask you just, you know, does God get what he wants? Yeah, of course God gets what he wants. He's everything. Right. So um, does he want all of his children to return home and be in eternal bliss with him? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if God what he want, what, wants what he wants and gets what he wants, and he wants us to return to an eternal life with him and you know live in bliss, then how in the world is anyone supposed to be able to go to hell because if it even exists? Because if God gets what he wants, then he's not getting what he wants, and that's not even possible. So right. it's just he goes through that. It's a big chapter in his book talking about like that's not even possible that this eternal hell exists. 
because it, God always gets what he wants and that's to return home with him. And I firmly believe no matter what religion, no matter what you do, even if it's the worst thing in the world, it's self judgment. And eventually, according to, from what I've understood, time doesn't even exist on the other side, but from our human perspective, we will all return home to with him. You know, I mentioned in the book, Jesus called it heaven. Moses called the promised land. The Buddha called it Nirvana, right? right? It's all the same thing. We get to all return home. And it's not just the select elite few that choose Jesus. That's some of them, right? I choose Jesus, you choose Jesus, but yeah. other people, the, the 1.2 billion Muslims and the 5 billion other people, religions in the world, they get to go home too, to God and be with him forever. We'll get back to grief to growth in just a few seconds. Did you know that Brian is an author and a life coach? If you're grieving or know someone who is grieving, his book, Grief to Growth, is a best-selling, easy-to-read book that might help you or someone you know. People work with Brian as a life coach to break through barriers and live their best lives. You can find out more about Brian and what he offers at www.grieftogrowth.com, www.grief2growth.com, or text GROWTH, G-R-O-W-T-H, to 31996. If you'd like to support this podcast, visit www.patreon.com slash grief to growth, www.patreon.com slash G-R-I-E-F, the number two, G-R-O-W-T-H, to make a financial contribution. And now, back to grief to growth. Uh, you know, I'm a yeah, you know, it's interesting when you mentioned Rob Bell, because I remember reading his book years ago when he first started kind of going down this path. And I forgot the title of the first book he kind of came out with where he, he, he kind of hinted on what we, I call Christian universalism, which was my first step away from that, that eternal health thing. And the Christian universalist believes that Jesus sacrifice saves everybody. Uh, I don't believe Jesus sacrifice saves anybody at this point, but that's that was my first step out. But when Rob kind of hinted at that, man, they, the, you talk about fear. They just, they just hammered him. And mm -hmm. there's a guy named Carlton Pearson, uh, who was a pastor, Pentecostal pastor, came up under Oral Roberts and had this mega church and was just super popular. When he started talking about universalism, I mean, everything just went away. I mean, he lost, he lost everything. And I, I followed him as he went through that, that thing. And it's just interesting to me how this this idea that everybody can be saved for so many Christians is it's so it's filled with fear. They're like you you can't tell people that. Um, and I, I read a guy uh, William Talbot wrote a book um, called The Irresistible Love of God, one of the best books I've ever read. Mm. And he talks about Calvinism and Arminianism. You know these two basically branches of Christianity. So one says that God gets whatever He wants. Calvinism says God gets whatever He wants, but God only wants to save certain people. So mm. God is predestined that these people are going to be saved and these people aren't and guess all the Calvinists are predestined to be saved. So God has irresistible grace. You can't, you can't resist it, but he selected you. And if he hasn't selected you, by the way, there's total depravity and you, you're just done. He just created right. you so he can throw you to hell. Perfect. And then the other side is Arminianism, which says, well, God wants to save everybody, but he just can't because you have free will and he gave you free will as a gift. So you can choose to send yourself to eternal damnation. Right. And I'm like, these are the two major branches of Christianity. If you think about mm -hmm. it, almost all Christian churches fit into one of those two paradigms. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy chooses a third way. He says, yes, God gets whatever he wants, and God wants everyone to be saved. And that means you're going to be saved whether you want it or not. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that he precludes your free will, but you eventually return to God. Mm -hmm. So that brings into things like, you know, maybe there's reincarnation. You know, maybe there's multiple lifetimes that we take to get back. And, and the Bible hints at that as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. I include a chapter on reincarnation in my book. And also yeah. there are, but, you know, Matthew, there's a couple of verses in John 3, 3. Uh, he talks about, you know, born again <laughs> by the water birth. I mean, you know, or, or even in Matthew 17, where he says, John, uh, Elijah is, is John the Baptist. You just don't know it because <laughs> his soul came back. To, and so and to your point about reincarnation, I never believed in that. I, God right. made me for me. And I talk about this in the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He made me for you, but he also made the higher part of you. That's living many experiences lifetime. And I've actually channeled people that have told me they've lived other, other lives with people. They've, they came back. I did a reading last month where I was channeling and this is a, experience some weird things that are against um logical thinking but i was doing a reading for a woman and it was her it ended up being her grandmother's soul living as her and the way she validated it was a lot of a lot of things but i was like does your mom tell you that you 
act and look like your like her mother and she's like all the time and and it, it was actually her soul coming it's crazy to think i mean most people hear that and think no way because it doesn't make sense her mother came back to live as her daughter uh, in this lifetime to experience all kinds of things and she like she literally validated it and that with things that i wouldn't even know something yeah. about a coffee cup and something about things like you know can boggle your mind but yeah so there's there's these you know, I don't want to call them truths because I feel like I would be ignorant to say that I know, or this is the truth. You'll never hear those words come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. You'll hear me say, I believe, I think, I feel, because there really is no way to know. So if I, I feel like for someone to claim that they know the truth, I, I feel like it's, you know, I, the word often gets misused, but it's ignorant. It means lack of knowledge. You, you don't know. None of us know. If yeah. anyone claims to know, you don't know. <laughs> That's just yeah. You know, the thing is, uh, Daniel, as we go through this, um, what I encourage people, because as I said, there's a lot of fear, I think, that's taught in Christianity. And I was, I was, I grew up in it, right? So they taught you, don't trust your own heart. Your heart is evil about you know, all things. So basically trust us, right? <laughs> listen to what we tell you. Don't listen to your heart, which yeah. I now know is the opposite. We all, we've all been given intuition. We've all been given a, a heart and we all have a we know the truth when we hear it. We get you and I both been getting these goosebumps, right? We get these God bumps, as some people call them, when we hear mm -hmm. the truth. And when we hear someone speak the truth, it's like it's not like we're learning it; it's we were remembering it. Mm -hmm. That's why it resonates so deeply with us. And I would always tell people, like, understand your Bible. Don't just read your Bible; that's fine. But understand the Bible history. Read different mm -hmm. translations. Understand, like, for right now, example, the word hell. There's been report it's disappearing from the Bible. Because most of the places where it was translated hell was a mistranslation. Every place in the Old Testament, it's a mistranslation because they use the word Sheol, which mm -hmm. is the grave. But when you read the King James, you think everybody that's dead goes to hell. Mm -hmm. And even when you read the New Testament, Jesus uses the word Gehenna, which was mm -hmm. an actual physical place that, that mm -hmm. the Jews knew. They knew he was talking in parables when he said it, but it got yeah. translated in our Bibles as hell. So this, this takes a lot of work to dig out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Gehenna, uh, which Rob Bell also talks about, was like a trash area where they burn trash. And like the gnashing of teeth is the animals that were trying to eat the food from the trash. It's not, you know, in my opinion, is not an eternal health. And it's funny you say it because, you know, listen to your heart is the first chapter in my book. So, and I literally, I'm not kidding you, I had a, the conversation with this uh, friend of mine who is a fundamentalist you know, by the book, uh, Christian who doesn't really understand or believe that I'm, what I'm doing is right in the, in the eyes of God. Um, and he said verbatim, I don't listen to my heart because my heart tells me all kinds of bad things. I only listen to the Bible. And I just, I just, it, it's the opposite of what I've always been taught of love is to God speaks through your heart. He teaches yeah. he, you. And I always mention, you know, you, it's, it's a semantic physical, you know, body part thing, but is to not listen with the ego mind with the, all the things of the world that we know we shouldn't do and to listen with our hearts and to trust what God is telling us. And in the book, I have a couple experiences where, you know, one of them was, I'll give a little hint towards the book is I was going to go on this all inclusive paid vacation. Yeah. And I actually turned it down because my heart was telling me and through spirit, was saying, you're not supposed to go. There's going to be this, it's just not meant to happen. So as soon as I listened to that and gave it away, my heart led me down a path and has always led me down the path to, you know, of, it's of my highest, you know, to, to help others. Yeah. I, you know, I have to be really careful because um, I don't want to condemn anybody else's path or anybody's faith or anything, but there is a branch, let's say at least of Christianity, that's basically cult like, right? Anybody that tells you not to listen to yourself and to listen to us or listen to a, a book, or our interpretation of a book, by the way, not just the book, uh, but our interpretation of the book, that's someone that's taking away your free will. It's someone's taking away your power. And so I, I, I will say this, is, that I will say I think is true. We need, all need to listen to our own hearts. And I think that, that God speaks through us, and we need to turn inward and say, what is the truth? And so if you're mm -hmm. looking at something, and, it, and it's good, right? It's bringing people peace, and it's bringing people joy, and it's bringing people love. And someone says, well, no, that's, that's, that's not a good thing. You know, listen to yourself, listen to your intuition. And that was the hardest thing for me to do because I would have, I still get them about once a week. Maybe someone will tell me I'm going to hell. They know better. Jesus is the only way I'm channeling the devil. And they, they don't know the, the parent who, um, uh, messages me and says that mm. and I was going to mention it earlier. I got, I never forget a woman. She lost her son. And I think it was her son. It was a while ago. And she messaged mm -hmm. me and said, thank you for my reading. Thank you for bringing him through. I have not left my house in a year since he died. 
And I am going back to church. I have faith in God again. I left my house. I can smile now, mm. right? I can do bumps. So that was, and, and, and I think that was even a free reading, which is the best because I love doing that without taking any money. And, right. and, and I, so then, then last week I get an email from someone saying, I'm going to hell and channeling the devil. If they could just see the peace and love and healing that comes from these readings, I've done over a thousand of them and it, I, I blow my own mind. I've actually gotten full names before. But it comes from the Holy Spirit. I credit the Holy Spirit because if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't have this. So yes, if for for anyone who is watching and you have whether it's mediumship or any kind of spiritual gift, and someone is telling you different, I preach this all the time on my 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 show and everything. Is you need to listen to your heart and what's God telling you in your heart, even though someone else is telling you different. We can't get caught up in what other people feel, believe, and think. We have to listen to God because He speaks through our heart, or listen to our heart because He speaks through it. And I feel like a lot of people get rest restricted. I had a, just a, 20 minutes before we got on here, I had a woman say that because of my te teachings, I hate we were saying it because it's me, but my teachings and the book has led her to embrace her gift and her life has been amazing because of it. And it's like, oh, that's, that's the devil like doing work and she's healing other people and it's all love. And so, yeah, it takes a lot of stepping outside your comfort zone and you got to deal, I got to deal with some people like that. And we you know what I do, I, I send them love. You watch my, you see on YouTube, I posted the mediumship versus Christianity or someone who gives me a negative review on Facebook, which isn't from a reading. It's from all, you know, the only one I got in 150 was someone leading Old Testament scripture. I send them love and I respond with love because that's what Jesus taught me. I think that's great. And I, you know, I, I interview a lot of people that have near death experiences. I put them on my YouTube channel and every once in a while, I, I get all these people say, this is so great. This is maybe feel so much better. I know my husband's still here. I know my child's still here, et cetera. And then you get those people and I look at them and I, I feel sorrow for them because they're, they're living in bondage. You know, they don't understand that we've actually been set free is the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. We're living in love. We're following our hearts. And so I, I don't let them get me down at all. I, I, I feel sorry for them and I'll, I'll engage with them and I'll tell them, you know, like, like we're just saying, you know, test the spirit. What's, what's the fruit of this? What's the fruit of, of this person coming back? The saying that all is well, I, I can think of this woman, Heidi Craig, I interviewed, all is well, all will be well, and you're unconditionally loved, you're never alone. Those are the three messages she brought back from her NDE. I don't, I don't think Satan has given us that message. Yeah, I know. And, 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 the, and the, the interesting part about that is it all comes from either, and I talk about this in my YouTube video, it either comes from a book that was written 2000 years ago, which is a great book and has a very valid, there's a lot of great stories in it, Absolutely. but it's miss a quote unquote, what I feel to be misinterpretation of old Testament scripture, or it's what you were just taught at one point. I talked about it in my, in the YouTube video is a lot of people that feel that it's against the Bible, you know, against, you know, it's the devil's work. They mm -hmm. just, heard it or they were told that. And so people hear things and we're, you know, we get things and we absorb them, but did we really figure it out for ourselves or were right. we just coached or taught that? And I think about half of my guess, as I talk about the video is about half the people, they don't even really know there's old Testament scripture that talk about it. They just heard from their church or from their family or from whoever, if they heard it from someone else, they heard it from someone else that it's wrong. That's it. They yeah. don't have these experiences with over a thousand readings and spirit communication where I've experienced the amount of love would, would boggle some of these people's minds that are just so closed off to it. If they would just take a second and reconsider what they've taught, what they believe, you, you know, you'll have a 50 year old man who always believed that, you know, who has an NDE and his whole life changes. Mm -hmm. My role in this world is to take those people that are in the middle that are a little bit open to this, even though they may have heard that or feel that to reconsider based on what I have in the book, what I've talked about in the video and what many, many other teachers and mediums and preachers talk about. Cause there are some preachers that talk about, you know, the spiritual spiritualist churches. We're supposed to connect with spirit. The Bible is full of prophecy. So are yeah. you open minded enough to be open to something that may be different than what you always thought or believed in that? is kind of like this whole chunk of conversation is what you and what I experienced to kind of get us out into true experience, true love and operating a high vibration. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We, we talk about churches and, and I, when I was doing my research and coming out, you know, I feel like I kind of made an exodus out of that, that bondage mm -hmm. that I was in. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I was doing my research, there are like over 30,000 Christian denominations. It sounds crazy, but the number is, it's really uncalculable, but it's tens of thousands. So if you're going to a church that says this is this and this is this and this is the only way it is, you can literally walk across the corner to another Christian church that's saying something very different. 
I ended up as I was, I went to a UCC church for a long, oh, no, I mentioned UCC. I went to a unity church for a while and the unity church, actually there's a medium that was attending the church and was out and said, I'm a medium. And the pastor talked about it. So there are, there are churches that will say, and they, they, they read the Bible, but they also read other uh, spiritual texts. And they've mm-hmm. kind of they've kind of said you know it's not this restrictive, and this is a good thing. They they would do Reiki healings after service. They'd have like mm-hmm. uh, every once a month they'd have a healing uh, healing Sunday, and people healers would come in and do healings. Okay, and the Bible tells us to lay hands on people. How is that not Reiki? I mean that's right. it, it's Reiki. Jesus Jesus performed healings. That was a form of Reiki. You know right. I talk about in Revelations one twenty when they say the seven candlesticks and. Mm-hmm. When, that he's seen it's the seven chakras he's showing up as energy which is what he is yeah so it, there's so much you know, there's so much to it but yeah it's it's if i had to you know say one thing to someone who's watching your podcast or someone who's gone through grief and even questions of whether they should consult a medium or do it because of old testament scripture or what they were taught reconsider all because there's people like me, for instance, like you who are spreading God's love and sharing a word of something that may be different than what they believed in. And the amount of healing that comes from a reading is, you know, and, and the last thing, the the guy had a conversation with yesterday he was so close minded to what I do, didn't even want to hear about it. If he would just be willing to listen and hear what I experienced because he's stuck and thinks it's the devil. He doesn't even want to hear it. He would be shocked. He would be, uh, if he could use his human heart and understand that what I do is from him, from God and for love, then uh, I think more people would be open to something like mediumship because it's so healing. So healing. And I would encourage people um, to study other faiths, not to, be, not to convert, but mm-hmm. when you do, as you've done and as I've done, you'll find out th- the same basic truth underlies all of them. And I could, I could take a Christian and give them the Quran and take the cover off of it. And most of them could not tell me whether it's the Quran or the Bible. Uh, mm-hmm. Because the the truths are the same, uh, and I remember there was a, a congressman. I can't remember his name. I wish I could, but he was he hated Islam. He was a, he was a fundamentalist Christian. So Islam mm-hmm. is of the devil. That Allah is the moon god. He believed that Allah was not God and all this stuff. But then mm-hmm. he actually studied Islam a little bit and and understood. It. And he wrote a book. It's it's called it something like a deadly misunderstanding. But he ended up writing an entire book on the on the Islamic faith and how it parallels Christianity. And most people don't know that the Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet. They believe that Jesus is is the son of God, not in the sense that he was begotten by God, because they say God doesn't beget, but they believe that Jesus is of God. They expect a second return. A lot of people don't know how similar the two faiths are. And Jesus has a tomb right next to the two founders of Islam. He's right. The, when he comes back, it's the third tomb, which is Jesus. <laughs> So there, and that's what I'm saying to people. I, I just encourage you to kind of break out of these these chains that you're in and do your own studying, do your own exploration, and don't be don't be afraid that it's going to lead you away from your faith. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to keep the faith. I, I'm telling you, I through readings and, and and I know I don't know if we're going to get to this, but in my readings, it's the most subtle impressions, feelings. It's not conversations. Mm-hmm. I don't see them. I don't hear them. I just feel them. And they often say, "Keep the faith." You know, and I have had people return to their Catholic roots, to their Christian roots, to their Muslim roots, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, religion they are and and Mm -hmm. spirit encourages it. And, you know, I don't know if you ever heard of the Course in Miracles, but, you know, I feel like the teachings of Jesus can be champions or learned at all times. It didn't just stop 2000 years ago. And I've listened to a lot of that. And they, he often says that there, there is no religion that's right. And there's no religion that's wrong. It mm-hmm. just is. So I feel like if someone is uh, Muslim uh, in this lifetime, that's what they're supposed to be. If you get someone who wrote that book and convert, that was what he's supposed to be. Yeah. If you're a Christian, that is what the faith is going to bring you to God. But it's not just the pigeonhole because of the one verse, because I don't know anything other than John 14, 6, and I couldn't have you know ignorance of that, but it just says that I am the way, I am the light. I don't think there's many other scriptures that says he's the only way. Um, many scriptures talk about all, everyone. I mean, it's throughout the whole Bible. It's not just yeah. the followers of this one amazing, wonderful, who you and I choose to follow. So yeah, all on the same point. So you did you t- touch on this. Let's talk about this. How does mediumship work? Because I think people have a misunderstanding. They think that, okay, Daniel sits down, the spirit walks in, sits beside him. He looks at him, the spirit just you know, starts talking to him. So how does it actually work? 
Yeah. And I think that's what my next book is going to be about, but I do hint at it to, in, in this book, but it's not how you think. I don't, uh, I don't know the future. I don't predict the future. I don't know. You know, I only allow people to come to me one time because I feel like they're supposed to build that relationship with God. You don't need a medium. I say you do need God, but it, it, it's subtle impressions. And I'll just give one small example. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's one of my favorites in the book. I was doing a reading for a woman and I hear the summer of 69 by, by Brian Adams. It's just, it's a song. So I ask her, do you like Brian Adams? Do you like 69? It plays in my head. It's not like an audible, but I feel it. And I haven't heard that song in years. Mm -hmm. And uh, now she had previously told me that her, um, her, I had to, to first talk about the name Jay. Who's the Jay? And she said, and she said, well, I was married to a Jeffrey, but my current husband is Jody. So I, I mentioned some things about her. Her dad came through and about, I, I validated some things about her divorce and her uh, husband's, uh, her dad's passing long story short. So then this, this song comes in my head. Do you like, uh, Brian Adams? Does uh, the song mean anything to you? Is it 69 mean anything? Is it June 9th? Because we have to, it's like a game of charades. We have to figure out what the spirit's trying to say. So we can't figure it out. She doesn't, you know, June 9th is nothing. She doesn't like Brian Adams. So I ask in my mind, can I move on? And, and I get this, firm, like, no, it's just like this feeling. And I'm like, okay, your dad won't let me get past this. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking of the song and I'm like, Jimmy quit. Jody got married. I go, Jody, I go, that's your husband's name. Right. And she's like, yes, yeah, get goosebumps. And, um, I'm like, did your dad miss the wedding? Was he already passed? And she said, yes. And I, and obviously you could think that because her ex-husband was around the time he passed. And I'm like, well, he's telling me to tell you that he didn't miss the wedding. He was there with you. Um, and that's the way he chose to do it. And then, so then we're all like emotional, whatever. I'm like, why am I seeing a star? I just see a star. And she's like, well, it was nighttime. And I'm like, no, that doesn't feel right. She's like, I go, were there stars out? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, no, that doesn't feel right. And so we're sitting there. I'm like, star, star. And she goes, oh my gosh, I cut a star out of his jacket and put it on my wedding dress so that he was with me. So like, I, there's no way I would know that she couldn't yeah. figure it out. So spirit uses all kinds of songs, names, groups of letters to communicate with, with us. And I have to figure out what it is. We have symbols, right? Mm -hmm. So when I see like a cane, that's my symbol to talk about that. The spirit knows that the person I'm giving the reading to thinks that they remember how they were towards the, the time they pass and doesn't re remember them how they were in the healthy times. And it's mm. too much on their mind. Uh, when they show me raisins, I have to talk about California for whatever reason. I have yeah. all kinds of symbols. So you'll watch like Teresa Computer and all the major mediums, but we all do have us like a, a um, like a dictionary, you know, and this means this because it's not as yeah. simple as you may think. And, and one of the last things before we go, I know we're hitting on the hour is I always worried about reading other people's minds. I did never wanted to do that. I would never want to like bring, bring your daughter through and have it be some information that somehow I was getting from you. So through, so spirit over time has shown me things that the person does not understand. They don't understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And it takes a little bit of research to validate whatever it was. And it'll be all kinds of crazy things, but it took a lot of those to help me realize that I wasn't just reading your mind. And this was actually coming somehow, some way from the soul of your loved one. And that, that was a huge thing for me. And I've had hundreds of validations of something like that, where you didn't yeah. even understand what it meant at the time. Yeah, you touched on so much really important stuff there. But for people that aren't familiar with mediumship, I want to kind of emphasize what you said. And I've, I've got a few minutes if you do. So um, uh, the, the the mediumship or reading, I think, is kind of an interactive thing. And it's like an interactive game of charades. Because I, you know, I, I won't tell the story because you just did. But, you know, it's like you you get a symbol and you give it to the person like, well, I don't get this. And then they give you some feedback and you kind of like figure out together what that's what that song meant right but it, it takes a little bit of work it's not like the, it's like the spirit came in and said yeah i was there at the wedding when you when you married jody um right. so i think that was really interesting but this it was a question i was going to ask and you, you kind of brushed by it pretty quickly you said you only have like clients have one private paid one-on-one -on -one session with you that's really unusual because I, I know people that go back to the same medium over and over again they're medium hopping they'll have media readings over so why is that your policy some people have snuck through, um, but it, it's my policy because I feel like we're, I feel like we're supposed to navigate our path with God. I don't feel like we're supposed to be stuck on, you know, mediums or people to, to, to rely on certain people to connect to our loved ones. So a, it's to connect with God directly, but also B, you don't need a medium to connect with your loved ones. Like I said, Jesus was a medium. He channeled Moses and Elijah right in the Bible. And it was for a very big reason. 
So if you lose someone you love in physical form and they're still around because eternal life exists as Jesus showed us and you want to connect with them, you don't need me. My job is to help nudge you and push you on that path so that you can connect with them yourself. Why, why would you have to spend time and pay at someone when you can um, connect with someone all on your own? You don't need, you don't need us. And I've had, I've had spirits tell me through me, you don't need him. Literally, you don't need Daniel would come through in my mind. Thank you for doing this, Daniel, but you don't need him. You can connect to me all yourself. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, in the, in, go ahead. What, what I wanted to ask you is you, you talked about, you know, you don't want people to, to be dependent on you or mediums at all. And I've seen people have a reading from a medium, like a group reading setting, and they'll say, well, tell Bobby I love him. And it's like, well, they, because they don't realize they can tell their loved one themselves. So yeah. in, in the book, you talk about an ongoing relationship with your father, and you, and you actually call it a dialogue that you have with your father. So explain to people what that actually means and how they can have that with their loved one. Yeah, it, it's all about trust, Brian. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, even as a medium, when I connect with my dad, it's not solid, it's not strong. It's just, I have to, I almost feel like I'm making it up. But, you know, I talk about in the book of a story I had on an airplane and they will use things, whether it's an animal or a situation or a group of words to validate what they're saying. In other words, so when I connect with him and I talk to him and I feel like he's talking back, I don't hear him. It's almost like you're making it up. But when you trust that it's really coming from his soul and and you really believe that, not only will you become to believe it's true, but once in a while you get these validations. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I talk about, I don't want to go through the story, but you'll get something to where something like it doesn't make sense. It's not possible. So it really had to be, I couldn't have made it up myself because it came from somewhere. So we all have that ability. It's just, it's all about trust. And, you know, I talk about with, with Jesus and connecting with Moses, right? I mean, it says it right in the Bible. If you look at John 14, 12 and Corinthians 11, 1, it says that we're supposed to do the works that Jesus does. Obviously, we're just talking about connecting with spirit. But Mm -hmm. I feel like if I allow people to come over and over again, and we get stuck in the addictive, you know, I had to quit gambling for for my gift. But there are people that get so, um, so caught up with going to mediums and want to connect with their loved ones, when they realize they can do it themselves, there's so much value in that. Um, And I do have people that come to me and say, I connect to my child, for instance, all the time but it's just nice to come to you. And so I do allow repeats. I've started to like go back and forth with this uh, because I did two weeks ago. I had two repeats written in a row that kind of snuck through because I don't have a process, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the readings were great. It really helped them. So it made me like reconsider. So I stick with that. But if someone, you know, not to promote someone sneaking through again, but I just, I feel like God and the Holy Spirit shares with me to share to others that you don't need anyone here in physical form to help connect you with source, with spirit, with your loved one in spirit. Um, and that's why I, I kind of like felt that. Well, I think that's a really important point. And that's why I wanted to really bring that out because um, I feel like I have an, I not to feel like I have an ongoing relationship with my daughter, but it's not, it's not a dialogue. So I think people would think like, well, Daniel can just sit down and talk to his father all the time, but it's, it's, it's subtle things. You, we talk about signs, you talked about coins and feathers and cardinals and I've never heard anybody talk about fruit flies before, but you said one of your signs from your father is a fruit fly. If, if, if it's okay with you, I, you know, really quick last year, I was the number one rep in my entire company. I was the number one of a hundred plus reps. And it was something that I, I talk about in the law of attraction and having your own reality. Mm-hmm. And so we're at a national sales meeting. I knew I was number one and the CFO of our entire company. This is just the, the, the CFO. We're just one small division. This guy gets up and starts talking to the group. And so I'm sitting there watching, just, you know, it's early in the morning. And, um, I see a fruit fly just cross right in front of my face. And, you know, it, it's in, in the hotel and I don't even think it was in February. Right. Yeah. And I get this feeling, it's a feeling of like, I'm very proud of you, son. And I was like, wow, that was like, that's crazy that he did that. that was, and I'm thinking, was that real? Like, mm-hmm. what are the chances of that? Well, I look at my phone and the time is 941. Not only has 41 always been my number, it's always been a number for me. I don't know why I'm going to be 41 in a couple of months. And I think it's a big year for me. But mm-hmm. my dad was born in September of 41. It's so 941. Oh, okay, wow. But not only I see a fruit fly go across, the CFO's there. But I look at my clock and it's 941. Yeah. 41 goes so then... If it doesn't get any crazy, you know, just, and I didn't include the story in my book, at least I don't think I did. Then he goes, he goes like this. Now it's 150 people there. He goes, where's Daniel John, right? You know, different last name, whatever. And I'm like, you know, it's 150 people there, our managers. And I raised my hand. He goes, that guy up in Syracuse, that's where the rubber meets the road. Like, and I'm thinking like, oh 
oh my gosh. So not only did the fruit fly come across, it was 941. <laughs> my dad was like, and then this guy calls out my name in front of everyone. Yeah. And, and by the way, dad was saying how proud he was of me. Yeah. That's the validation you get. So until I had those validations with the time and the call out from the CFO, I would have thought I was just making it up because that's how subtle it is. Right. And, and, and you, as you know, probably eight or nine out of tens, is she really, you know, is she really connecting with me? You know, is it really her? But once out of every 10, maybe or so, I want to speak for you. You'll get this thing. I was like, oh my gosh, it really was her. Cause there's no way I could have made that up. You can't right. make those circumstances up. So yeah, the majority of the time is you got to trust, you know, you're not making it up. Uh, but you'll get these validations if you pay attention and trust. Yeah, I think that is an excellent story. And I, and I like the way, because that's the way it works for, for me anyway, because I'm an engineer. So I always calculate the odds of something. You know, not yeah. literally, but like, okay, well, I see a cardinal, you know, I live in Ohio, it's a state bird. Cardinals are fairly common here. But if you see a cardinal and it's 11-11 and then your mother calls you or something, or, you know, it's when these things tie together that that you realized, and, and that was, a, I think that was a perfect story as to how it's like someone could say, well, it's a fruit fly in a hotel. Okay. There's lots of fruit in a hotel, but it's the timing of the thing. Yeah. And all the validation. And I just want to share one more happened the other day. My family, my in-laws, they lost, we lost our, my father-in-law or their husband and their father. And they went to a medium last Tuesday. So we went out to dinner on our way home from dinner. We're, we're talking about, you know, it's a little bit of the reading and we're just, you know, and celebrating his life and thinking, even just thinking about him and the car in front of us. Now, my in-laws own a, a, a restaurant and 86 is in the name. The license plate ahead was 8686. And the license plate was from Ohio, which made me think of this. And Ohio is actually where he passed away, even though he lives in New York. Oh, and wow. the 8686 is not only um, the name of their business, but it's a lot of their like passcodes and things like that. Nobody's yeah. told that. Not that you know the names or anything. But 8686 is a lot of their passcodes to so, like all of their family. And it's on the license plate and the car in front of us while we're going out to dinner the night that they saw Medium for the first time since he passed yeah. with an Ohio license plate, which is where he passed away. And oh, yeah. by the way, it was a white car, which all of their family has. I mean, you can, being an engineer, you can't make that up. So we're all yeah. sitting there looking at it like, what are the chances of that? It's yeah. Because, it's and that's the thing that people need to keep their eyes open for, because it, it, just real quick, I got to tell you this story, because Shana, it was her angel anniversary date a few weeks ago, June 24th, it was five years. And so, you know, it's a rough day. So I didn't ask for signs, but other people had asked for signs, because I didn't want to be disappointed. So we're dri I'm driving my wife to therapy, and I look up in front of me, and there's a, a, a truck on the back of the truck. It's not a bumper sticker, it's like stencil in the back of the truck. It says, I am right here, exclamation point. And then my wife, I didn't even catch it. My wife goes, it's a sign. It's from Shane. It says, I'm right here. And then I look up in the, in the uh, there's a sticker on the, on the back windshield of the truck that's, you know, these things that say home and it's the outline of the state for the letter O, the people wear them on the t-shirts and stuff. It's a sticker and it's, it's Ohio. And Shana was born in Ohio. We live in Ohio. So I'm like, you know, how can you, that, that was a sign from Shane. I mean, it was like right over, right over the head. And then the next day I'm on my walk. And I see there's a big home sign on one of the houses I walk by every single day that I that hadn't been there before. It just came, it just appeared that day. So those yeah. are the types of things. That, and I tell these stories so people know what to look for. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great, uh, I, I love that. I love that example in your book. And I share a, a bunch of other examples like that in my book, like when I found my spirit guide eyes and things like that. So those, I think those, and people have messaged me already. It's only been on a month. They start, they're starting to get their own signs just by reading the book. And exactly. that is why I did. It's not, I don't, you know, as an author, you know, we don't make a ton of money on books. It's more about helping others and what kind of impact you can have on everyone that reads your book, right? I read your book, the grief to grow it to, to help people understand and cope with grief. For yeah. me, it's, it's mediumship. How does it work? How can I connect with my loved ones? And, and I think people read these stories and it opens them up somehow. And, and I had a girl just message me yesterday. She started dreaming of her grandma and she was very close with her and she never dreamt of her until she started reading the book. And she yeah. felt like the book opened her up to that. And it's just, it's so awesome. To, and you know, this as an author, someone writes you something about how you, you know, you wrote a book and you helped them. There's nothing greater than that. Nothing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk. The book is uh, Why Are We Here? Reflections on Life from a Spiritual Medium by Daniel John. And Daniel, where can people reach you? What's your website? So it's danieljohnmedium.com. And okay. you can actually buy a book off the uh, sh there's a shop section. And the book is uh, 30, $30, but it includes a 20% off coupon for a future reading. Oh, so okay. if it's ever a, a Zoom reading, it actually makes the book free and all the shipping and everything free. So, um, but also includes my autograph, includes shipping. I have to pay sales tax on it. Um, 
uh, in, in the book itself that you, or you, if you don't really care about the you know, coupon or you don't really need an autograph, um, you can buy it from Amazon. It's 14 bucks. Okay, cool. That's great. That's a great offer. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, Daniel, it's been good catching up with you again. I know, uh, I know you got to run. Uh, I, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Brian. I, I really appreciate it. It was fun. All right. Have, enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Much love. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I want to make it really easy for you to reach me. So just send me a text to 31996 and simply text the word growth, G-R-O-W-T-H. In fact, you can right now just say, hey, Siri, send a message to 31996. And when Siri asks you what you want to send, just say growth. You can do the same thing with OK Google. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to Grief to Growth. Brian hopes that you find this episode helpful and will come back for future episodes. Brian's best-selling book, Grief to Growth, Planted Not Buried, is a great resource for anyone who is coping with grief or knows someone who is. If you enjoy the podcast and would like to support it, there are three things you can do to help. The first is to share the podcast with someone that you think it will help. The second is to go to iTunes, rate, and review the episode. The third way you can support the podcast is by becoming a patron. Head over to www.patreon.com slash grief to growth. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash grief, the number two, growth, and sign up to make a small monthly donation. Patrons get access to exclusive bonus content and knowledge that you are helping to spread the message of grief to growth. For more about Brian and grief to growth, visit www.grief2growth.com. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of the podcast, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. What questions came up for you? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? I invite you to visit us at grieftogrowth.circle.so. That's grief2growth.circle.so to continue the conversation with me and with other listeners. It's a space to sound off, to share reactions, and to go deeper into the topics from the show. I look forward to chatting more, and I hope to see you there.